I want to take a moment and thank everyone who prayed for this renewal. Um, there were many children, I noticed, in our assembly that constantly reminded us to pray for this renewal. I take that as a, as a good sign that um, the Lord has good things marked out for us in the days to come. I want to thank Brother Given for starting these renewals 18 years ago. You know, it was the hearing of the first two renewals that brought me back to the Lord. As I heard the messages, as I heard uh, men of God speak about God, I actually had a, a, a covetous spirit. I wanted to be like them. And um, it, it, it was so powerful, it brought, it brought me back. And um, so I have a special affection for these, these meetings because of that. Uh, even a more special affection to the preaching of the cross. It has the power of God on the salvation, you know. And these meetings from the very onset have been special times of refreshment. So see, that makes them special. This is a special time when God has um, assisted us in coming closer to him, being able to, um, to deny ungodliness and worldly lusts and live more soberly and more righteously in this present generation. So I wanted to give thanks for that. These are um, seasons, good seasons. I want to thank the brethren of this assembly that provided us this place to meet in such a comfortable place to be able to come together. Um, I wanted to thank the brethren that traveled all the way here. There's a lot of people that travel far distance to come here. And um, the reason that I thought of thanking, giving thanks for these things is because the personalities in heaven haven't missed any of these things. So we want to be quick to be able to, to pick up on these things and um, to give God thanks. I mean, he's done marvelous things. Now, we have come here today because we have a great desire to look into and understand more fully what Jesus is presently doing. Jesus is presently doing something. Um, Brother Gibbons graciously lets us choose our topics, and, and I've chosen a foundational topic. I chose it because the Lord has given me to see something about it. I, I looked at the other ones, and I can see something, but I, this was the one I could see the most in. So, one, I want to thank God that he's given me to see something. The author and the finisher of our faith. Our text is in Hebrews chapter 12, verse 2, and it reads, Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. Now I'm going to focus, I'm going to focus my attention on Jesus' present administration in the authoring and the finishing of faith. Now I'm going to try with all my, all the, the might that I have to focus on those two issues. That Jesus is an author. And Jesus is a finisher. Now Mark Twain authored the book, The Adventures of Tom Sawyer. But he wasn't there every time the book was read. He wasn't. People could read that book and they had a question. Sorry, he's not around anymore. He had a quite an inventive style of writing that made the character seem to come alive. And yet, no character ever really came alive. Now, our, our author is not an author like this. Not after this manner. What is an author? Well, an author is any person or entity or persons that originates and assumes responsibility for an expression or communication. Amen. Authors are responsible for acknowledging contributors and are distinguished from compilers or translators or editors or copyists. Frequently, the word author is used to suggest a person who creates a written work it means it didn't it, it didn't it wasn't here before he created it he actually created it we wouldn't so many things that we wouldn't have 
if somebody hadn't come along and thought it up and created it. Well, I'm here today to say you wouldn't have faith if Jesus hadn't created it in you. Amen. He's the author of your faith. Amen. Faith has to be born or created in a person or the fact is they just don't have it. Now, see, he hasn't given this ministry to you or to me. He's given the ministry to Jesus. Amen. He Amen. is the author. All it takes for Jesus to create faith in someone is just give it to him. Wow, that's, um, that, that's, that's a ministry. Now, see, Jesus is, is actually uniquely fit to do this work. See, he's, he's been fit by God to do this precise work. I don't have the gift of being able to look into the man's heart and see his thoughts and his intents. Jesus can. Yeah. Jesus can do this, which is actually required in order to be able to give or author faith. Amen. Now, ownership of this attribute cannot be transferred to those that receive faith, which means that just because I have faith doesn't mean that I can give you faith. Yeah. I can own it. It's mine. It's my faith. He really did create it in me. But it's not possible for faith to be authored by another. Jesus owns the copyright. Amen. He owns it. Can't be done by another. Amen. Jesus himself said, No man can come to me except the Father which hath sent me draw him. And I will raise him up at the last day. This is um, men cannot experience eternal life independent from Jesus. Men can't even come to Jesus unless God's involved in the process. Uh, Jeremiah and Solomon will testify, O oh Lord, I know that the way of man is not in himself. It is not in man that walketh to direct his steps. The preparations of the heart in man and the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. All the ways of man are clean in his own eyes, but the Lord weigheth the spirits. We could never arrive spotless and white, sinless and perfect on the day of judgment had we been left to our own imaginations or our own ways. We can't even prepare our heart to know the Lord. It's not possible. I can't prepare your heart, you can't prepare my heart, and I can't prepare my heart either. See, it's just a matter of pride. Man's, every man's ways are right in his own eyes. So why would I ever incline my heart to the 